Well, my 2022 New Year's resolution is to have more fun. So I thought about doing a series of videos called Five Minutes of Fun, where I'm gonna try and just have fun and do a video that's gonna maybe make me laugh and put a smile on the face of strangers. Either every week or every other week, I'm just gonna try and create a video that's funny. My mom was voted class clown and class wit, so I was lucky to grow up in a household where there was a lot of laughter. And even though I'm very reserved and I hate being the center of attention, I've been writing jokes since my freshman year in high school, and I have like over 200 pages of jokes. I have all these different video funny skit ideas that basically just sit on my computer. So my resolution this year is to share my humor and hopefully make some people laugh. One idea I had is called making fun of the news. I wanted to write a new joke every day, so I thought maybe looking at Google News every night would give me some ideas of things to make fun of. So I set a reminder on my phone every night for 8.45 and I looked at Google News and other websites to see if there was any headlines that stuck out that would be something that maybe I could think of a joke about. A lot of it is US entertainment news, but I also threw in some like science and international news as well as some weird local stories. So this first video is all of December. I came up with a joke every day and I'm gonna use my green screen behind me to share photos from each story. So why am I on a bed? Pretty much it's the easiest place to do it with the green screen behind me. So that's where I came up with the idea to do making fun of the news. This video is for all of December, but I'm gonna try and do once a week on Sunday nights. I'll update my jokes for the previous week. And pretty much as of now, I'm guessing I'm gonna flake on this probably by mid-February, but we'll see what happens. December 1st, in 2020, scientists came up with the first living robots called xenobots, which are made from frog stem cells. Recently, researchers found that these xenobots can self-replicate. There was someone who's really upset to hear this news that frogs can reproduce on their own. <laughs> December 2nd, Google may debut a smartwatch in 2022. Interestingly, it looks like something only a stupid person would buy. If you don't feel old enough, Britney Spears finally turned 40 years old. To celebrate, she had a party where guests lip-synced happy birthday, shaved their heads, and removed their IUDs. Fun fact about birth control, I once worked with this lady who said that she had previously worked at Planned Parenthood as a counselor, and she said this woman would come in all the time saying that she's pregnant again even though she was taking the birth control. My coworker seriously said that the woman was eating the diaphragm that they were giving her instead of, you know, like shoving it inside. I'm really gullible, but she seemed to be serious, even though it seems really unbelievable. But I can't really blame the woman. To me, it does look like a ravioli. So, I mean, if you're hungry, I would eat that too. December 3rd, Lady Gaga was honored by the New York film critics for her performance in House of Gucci. In the movie, she plays real life Italian Patrizia Reggiani. Sweetie. who was convicted of trying to assassinate her ex-husband, Maurizio Gucci. Oh my God. She also won a Razzie for worst Russian accent. She also won a Razzie for best unintentional Russian accent. In the latest music matchup of Versus, it was between Bone Thugs and Harmony and Three Six Mafia, which ended with a fight on stage. If thugs are going against Mafia, I mean, do you really expect it to end in a tea party? Khloe Kardashian's baby daddy, NBA player Tristan Thompson, has been accused of cheating again. This time he fathered a baby girl named Take. Greeting cards can be sent to Miss Take Thompson. Meanwhile, like her ex-stepdaddy Bruce Jenner, Khloe is transitioning and would like to be known as Doormat. <laughs> On September 4th, September? <laughs> On December 4th, Spotify removed a bunch of comedian performances over a fight on royalties. The comedians want to get paid for writing the jokes and also performing them, kind of like musicians get paid for writing the music and the lyrics. Jennifer Lopez, also known as J-Ho, must not make any money off of Spotify because she doesn't write or sing any of her songs. I wonder if Selena Gomez gets paid for spoken word performances because whenever I hear her songs on the radio, I think, oh, she's my favorite talker because what she's doing ain't singing. She even put herself to sleep. On December 5th, the NFL team, the Detroit Lions, finally won their first game in 364 days. 
which was the second longest losing streak in the NFL, only to Aaron Rodgers' 38-year losing streak of not turning an engagement into an actual marriage. On December 6th, actor Jesse Smollett pleaded... No, he didn't plead sh On December 6th, actor Jesse Smollett took the stand in his own trial, saying that two strangers attacked him in January 2019. The police are accusing him of orchestrating it to get publicity. If he wanted free publicity, he should have just waited until January 2021, took a flight to Washington, D.C., an Uber to the Capitol, and wore a t-shirt that said either I'm a Democrat or Black Lives Matter, and he would have got his ass whooped for free. He requested that his testimony be televised in hopes that his perjury would be eligible for a dramatic Emmy nomination. First of all, he said that he walked to Subway at 2 a.m. in freezing Chicago weather in January. Apparently, he ordered a $5 foot-long jail sentence. I mean, everybody knows the only place you would walk to in that kind of weather would be Taco Bell. Guilty. Speaking of guilty, the artist obviously ran out of crayons. And this one guy was obviously so bored, he started picking his earwax. December 7th, the People's Choice Awards were held and didn't include a single person that I would have chosen for anything other than worse dressed. In honor of the dead Joan Rivers, I came up with some bitchy fashion comments. Sarah Hyland honored the person who donated a kidney to her by repurposing the sheet that separated their two hospital beds. Jennifer Goodwin or Jennifer Goodwin? I don't know, frankly, Scarlett. Who are these people? I don't know what she is wearing. It's like, is that a Kwanzaa Christmas tree? Beverly Hills Real House divorcee, Erica Jane, who is battling legal issues, thanked the police for allowing her to transfer her tracking device from her ankle to the top of her head. Kim Kardashian was wearing dark sunglasses at night given to her by Pete Davidson, so she couldn't see him cheating on her. The house of Beverly Hills housewife Dorit was recently burglarized, so she was wearing what was left of one of her stolen dresses. <laughs> Lisa Rinna wore too much of everything. Woman overboard, and she wasn't even on a boat. Speaking of overdoing it, is this Lil' Kim? Chelsea Handler came direct from the set of her new movie, Cruella Over to Hell. That's not a good joke. Portia Williams wore the dress equivalent of a Ford Fiesta. Kyle Richards wore a bunch of black pipe cleaners held together with lace and one of Olivia Newton-John's old headbands. Speaking of black pipe cleaners, Mariah. On December 8th, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson imposed COVID Plan B to contain Omicron. Every citizen will be given a Plan B pill that will kill the virus and any possible future child support payments by the next morning. On December 9th, a 60-year-old woman high on cocaine and driving an SUV was arrested after leading police on a chase onto a golf course. Golfers called 911 to report a driver on the golf course and had to repeatedly tell the operators that they were not talking about a type of golf club. She was arrested for driving while intoxicated and various crimes of fashion. It looks like she was dressed to go clubbing, so I don't know if she like Googled the wrong kind of club. On December 10th, the CEO of the website Better.com held a three-minute Zoom call to tell 900 employees on the call that they were being immediately terminated. After criticism, he announced that he was taking some time off and will be updating his resume and apply for a job as CEO of Worse.com. On the Zoom call, all the 900 terminated employees' backgrounds were immediately changed to an unemployment line. December 11th, the Jacksonville Jaguars are an NFL team with a 2-10 record, and apparently everybody hates their coach, Urban Meyer. Apparently he was well-liked by some black players, but by none of the white players. So he thought maybe he could fix this by changing his name from Urban Meyer to Suburban Meyer. It's looking like he's going to be fired. So he's going to be moving from the downtown area out to the countryside. And he's probably going to change his name to Suburban Meyer. I came up with that joke at like 11 o'clock at night and I just needed to meet my one joke a day quota. So maybe that one wasn't that great. Due to inflation, Tampa Bay, Florida reported an increase in prices by 8%, which means that strippers now expect a dollar and eight cents to be tucked into their G-string. So be sure to look under your car seats for nickels and pennies for the next time you go to the strip club. Strippers requested that horny customers hold the change in their sweaty palms before pressing them against their bare skin so it's not too cold. 10 South Dakota school teachers participated in a five minute Dash for Cash event where $5,000 was up for grabs or down for grabs. History teacher Mr. Simpson said he was going to use the money to buy a bulletproof vest. And gym teacher Miss Henderson said she was going to spend the $448 on a one-way plane ticket to a better state.
On December 13th, Kim Kardashian celebrated passing the baby bar exam by being photographed trying to pass the strip club bathroom attendant exam. To clear the palate, now time for some science news, researchers found that men who took Viagra have a lower risk of developing Alzheimer's. But it's probably for the best that old men have bad memories because who wants to remember the time that you walked around with a boner for eight hours that nobody wanted to touch? On December 14th, there was good news for dumbasses like me. Researchers said that there was no difference in the intelligence between rocket scientists. I have to look over to see. I'm so dumb, I can't remember. And brain surgeons. Oh my God. And the average person. So there was hope for the rest of us or some of us. Answer honey boo boo here. Fun fact, my dad is very strict about bad language. So I hope he doesn't find this channel. So one time when I was in second grade at the dinner table, I said the word F-A-R-T. So my dad immediately took me to the bathroom and put a bar of dial soap in my mouth, I guess to clean out the dirty words. So I probably said that word maybe twice in the 40 years since that happened because apparently it worked. So I was kind of triggered when I found this next story. This is from her Instagram. Due to popular demand, I finally decided to start selling my jarred F-A-R-T-S over on my unfiltered page. Alongside my spicy content, you can now also purchase my F-A-R-T-S in a jar. I'm super excited to share this with you all, aka disgusting men. And after seeing how many people, aka disgusting men, wanted this, I figured I'd finally give the people, aka disgusting men, what they wanted. Sale starts today and lasts only 10 days. First 100 orders get their farts 50% off, only $500. $1,000 for a jar of stinky air that probably dissipated by the time it arrives at a guy's apartment. I'm never eating someone's homemade jelly again because who knows how they repurpose that jar. Billions of humans have had billions of conversations and you would think that practically every phrase has been spoken in the history of mankind. But I cannot imagine a situation where somebody has said, first 100 farts are 50% off. The only other time could be maybe like a Mexican restaurant going out of business. Her dad needs to wash her butthole out with dial soap. Does she get a feeling in her stomach and then she runs for the nearest jar screaming, time to manufacture some product. And then she assumes the position and another position and another position. I looked at this picture and thought, oh, my parents have something like that in front of their fireplace. I thought this is the first Instagram post that has zero likes other than one of mine. So I looked to see who liked it. And this guy, it looks like this is the face he made when he opened the jar. And this is him smelling Amy Schumer's farts. I have a special treat. I bought a jar. Let's see what it smells like. It smells like... Desperation. I did not buy a jar of someone's farts. If there's one lesson to learn, it's be careful whose Instagram post you like. On December 16th, after coworkers complained to Human Resources about his onset behavior, actor Jeff Garland left the TV show The Goldbergs. Apparently, 80 YouTube viewers gave a thumbs up that he's out of a job, but he might be already working on a new show called Curb Your Harassment. He's on Larry David's show Curb Your Enthusiasm, for those of you who didn't laugh at that joke because you're too poor to afford HBO. On December 17th, food company Kellogg's finally came to an agreement with their employees after a 10-week strike over a contract. As part of the deal, angry workers demanded that for revenge, they wanted senior executives to have to eat all brand for the next month. On December 18th, due to a COVID outbreak, Saturday Night Live did not have a studio audience. So like a normal show, the same number of people laughed at Pete Davidson's impressions. On December 19th, a former U.S. Olympic skating champion was indicted after she fraudulently obtained $10 million in COVID-19 relief aid and apparently used $150,000 to finance the Elijah Wood movie, No Man of God, about killer Ted Bundy. Allison Baver submitted an application saying that she had 430 employees with a monthly payroll of $4 million when she had no employees whatsoever. Her $150,000 to finance the film were apparently to hire somebody to hide behind actor Elijah Wood while holding clear tape attached to his ear so they didn't stick out so much during each scene. The prosecutor said Miss Baver is skating on thin ice and he hopes she falls through it. For her punishment, in addition to having to return the money, prosecutors will be forcing her to wear skater Johnny Weir's wardrobe in public for a year. They should just call Tyron Harding to whack her in the knees a few times.
So I read the headline and I came up with a bunch of figure skating jokes and apparently she's a speed skater. So the Russian judge gave me a score of 1.2 for my reading comprehension and joke skills. But I was like, screw it, deal with these jokes. December 20th, in trashy news from England, a mother was fined for breaking her own daughter's nose. No, it wasn't Drunk Spice. For this one, I didn't even bother to read the story. Like most news stories, I just look at the pictures. I instantly assumed that the mother was mad at the daughter for leaving the house with severe camel toe. Forget breaking her nose, she's gonna break her own hymen. Don't look. And that outfit looks like she repurposed her grandma's tablecloth from 1970. Like when her friends point at her crotch, she's like, I don't need a tampon. That's a ketchup stain from me grandfather's cheeseburger. All right, I need to work on my accents. This chick is so retro. She has an outfit from the 70s, hair from the 80s, a fanny pack from the 90s, and her breasts look like they're in the 30s or 40s. December 21st, a 66 million year old dinosaur egg was discovered in China. Aww. To celebrate, the Shanghai IHOP is going to hold an auction and the highest bidder will eat a Jurassic omelet. The proceeds from the auction will benefit communism. December 22nd, the National Transportation something or other are looking into Tesla's passenger play feature because apparently some people are playing Grand Theft Auto while committing Grand Theft Auto. Actually, Tesla S is one of the least stolen cars. The least stolen car is a Dodge minivan, not because it's hard to break into, but because nobody wants to be seen driving one. December 23rd, in You Gotta Be Kidding Me news, a body positivity website called more-love.org has released printed cards that say, don't weigh me for people who get stressed out at the doctor's office. A person who wishes to remain nameless suggested that they also print out for home use cards that say, don't eat your 13th double stuffed Oreo. Fun fact, I once ate half a bag of double stuffed Oreos for dessert and the other half for breakfast the next morning. I know a lot of you watching our nymphos and chubby chasers, but the website morelove.org without the hyphen is not something you wanna waste your time on. On December 24th, Kate Middleton surprised TV viewers when she played the piano during a Christmas concert. Afterwards, she said she hadn't had that much difficulty tickling the ivory since the first time she and Prince William French kissed. <coughs> December 25th. On Christmas, I didn't get any presents, so either Santa had supply chain issues or nobody cares about me. In other royal news, Queen Elizabeth got a scare on Christmas Day when a 19-year-old who was either drunk or crazy tried to break into her castle with a crossbow. If I were him, I would tell the judge that I heard she was looking for love and that I'm Cupid. The $10 billion powerful James Webb telescope was finally sent into space by NASA, and its purpose is to look for Earth-like planets. So basically, they're looking for a 4 billion year old planet that has been ruined in the last 100 years, where the inhabitants can't get along, and where TV interviews oh, you are so dumb. get remixed, you are so dumb. and then remixed again. For fun, NASA plans to aim the telescope back at Earth just to see what Kim Jong-un is eating for dinner. <laughs> CES is a huge technology conference held in Las Vegas every year, but this year due to Omicron, a lot of people are canceling. So I saw a headline that said, Microsoft latest firm to pull out of CES. Normally it's one of the biggest weeks for prostitutes in Las Vegas, but tragically with less attendees, there won't be as many men pulling out of escorts named Jasmine. On December 26th, Korean pop group BTS announced that their members RM, Jin, and Suga tested positive for coronavirus. Oh no, not Suga. Is that Suge Knight's illegitimate son? I don't know which one is which, and I'm actually proud of that. So that means that three out of the seven bottoms in the group are gonna have to wait 10 days before they have to pretend to actually be attracted to their female fans. December 27th, in Afghanistan, the Taliban banned women from taking long road trips without a male relative present. They enacted the law after they got their hands on a VHS copy of Thelma and Louise. On December 28th, a time capsule from 1887 was opened in Richmond, Virginia. The box contained Confederate money, military memorabilia, and books, including a draft version of the Bible before it was finally finished being written in 1962. In its place, researchers planted a new time capsule with items from 2021 including a do-it-yourself face mask donated by lead researcher Dr. Becky Hopkins, Andrew Cuomo's nipple piercings, Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend's fiance's wedding dress, 
from her canceled wedding because she refused to get married to a guy who got bull balls after getting the vaccine, and a jar of Instaho farts. December 29th, the most clever headline of the month was about a psycho squirrel in the United Kingdom that went nuts by attacking 18 people in two days. Thanks to that earlier news story, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that that averages nine people a day yelling, help! It also bit dogs and cats and chased people down country roads. The townspeople gave it the nickname Stripe after a character in the movie Gremlins, but they're more polite than me because I would have just called it, you little f***er. It is speculated that the squirrel suffered from brain damage after too many spins trying to steal food from bird feeders in the neighborhood. The squirrel was finally lured into a cage using some peanuts and the townspeople celebrated by eating barbecue squirrels while his girlfriend looked on in horror. December 30th, alleged singer and new mother Katy Perry opened a new residency in Las Vegas where one of her outfits had beer cans over her milk cans. In related news, her 15-month-old daughter Daisy Dove Bloom was arrested for bouncing while intoxicated. Daisy Dove? It sounds like Katie and Orlando Bloom were drunk when they came up with that name. December 31st, after four years and $80 million in renovations, London's Big Ben clock finally rang in the new year. Sadly, Uncle Ben will remain silenced for eternity. $80 million to fix a clock when everybody has the time on their cell phones? Time for a new government. Sadly, it was announced that Betty White died at 99 years old. The Golden Girls is my favorite show of all time. I watched it back in seventh grade and I would think, oh, they should do this line or do this differently. And I had aspirations to become a sitcom writer because of that show. And now I'm old and it's too late to even do it. And I've procrastinated way too much, but whatever, that's a different story. So I think the reason I love the Golden Girls is because I kind of relate to each one. Like I'm dumb like Rose, I'm sarcastic like Sophia, I'm a slut like Blanche, and I'm tall with a deep voice and big d like B. Arthur.